I worked my way through the crowd into a line of more than 300 people to meet one of my favorite authors and get him to sign his latest book. It was October of 2009 and more than 1,500 captivated fans packed into a school auditorium to hear him speak. David Sedaris had come to Little Rock and I was there, front row, stage right. I assumed he'd read from his previous works. He had seven books and dozens of articles to his name, so he didn't have to search for material. My assumption was wrong. He treated us to some of his unpublished work. One piece was from a forthcoming book of animal fables. In the story, several critters stood, around, stood in an airport-like line, grousing about the unreasonable procedures and bureaucratic inflexibility. <laughs> the counter-agent, a black snake, refused to bend the rules. An argument ensued, and ultimately, the duck walked off. <laughs> Something about the story bothered me, but I couldn't figure out exactly what. Was it one of the points of the story? There were several messages, some more subtle than others, about violence, racism, security, ignorance, and hypocrisy. Was one of the lessons sitting too close to home? I didn't think so, but I wasn't sure. I stood in line, waiting to meet this man whose words had been part of my life since college, and the story continued to eat at me. He warned us during this talk that he always asks questions of people when he does signings. If we were going to pry into his life, it's only fair for him to get to do the same, right? By the time I reached him, it was almost midnight, and I had identified my aggravation with the story. I had my question ready, but he went first. His question led us into a nice little conversation about Fayetteville, my hometown, and the next stop on his tour. Then it was my turn. In the animal story, when the duck walks off, why does he walk off, I said. Why doesn't he waddle off? <laughs> he looked at me expressionless. I don't know, he said. <laughs> I was afraid I might have offended him, so we kept talking. It's just that you're typically so precise with your word choice. He kept looking at me, but it felt more like he was looking through me. So I kept talking. I've never been one to get starstruck, but I've watched plenty of people become flustered and stupid from meeting an actor, a singer, or a politician. This time, I was the flustered, stupid one. I, I, I thought there might be some reason you chose. I, um, I was just wondering. <laughs> Finally, I shut up long enough for him to answer. I don't know, he said again, seeming to come back into the moment. That's a very good observation. Thanks, I said, thinking like a kindergartner who had just got a gold star from the teacher. <laughs> then the unbelievable happened. He reached into his jacket pocket and fished out a little notebook. I read about this notebook for years. I knew what it was, and I couldn't believe I was actually seeing it. He opened the notebook and started scribbling. I'm going to change that, he said, still scribbling. He stopped writing and looked directly at me. On your suggestion. I thought I might faint on the spot. I can die happy. I just edited David Sedaris. <laughs> I pulled myself together and managed to speak in a steady voice, I think. Thank you, I said. It's nice to meet you. Please say hi to Fayetteville for me. And I walked off. No, I bounced off. I could think of nothing else for several days. I eventually stopped boring my friends with the story that everyone must have heard it at least three times before I realized I had become a broken record. In early November of the following year, I was listening to NPR and heard someone reference a new Sedaris book. That has to be the book, I thought. It's been more than a year. It must be out by now. And in fact, it was released in September. I had completely missed it. One question remained. Had he actually made the change? I rushed to Barnes and Noble, found the humor section, and then the book. It was on the bottom shelf, so I squatted in front of the bookcase and picked up Squirrel Seeks Chipmunk by David Sedaris. Not bothering to move to a chair, stand back up, or even sit down on the floor, I flipped through the pages with reckless abandon as if I was going to turn directly to the story or recognize it on sight. I stopped. I needed a plan. I decided to look to start with the table of contents. 
But what was I looking for? It had been a year. I didn't remember the whole story, much less the title. Something about a dog, of course, and a snake. Each chapter had animals in its title. The cat and the baboon. The parenting storks. The judicious brown chicken. Only one mentioned a duck, and only one mentioned a snake. The duck tail came first, so I decided to start there. The turtle, the toad, and the duck. Oddly enough, I didn't scan the story. I actually read it. Within three paragraphs, I knew it was the one. I kept reading slowly. I enjoyed it the first time, so I knew it would be fun to let the story unfold as my memory caught up. Then, there it was. I was so excited that I immediately sent texts to all the kind souls I'd exhausted with the story a year earlier. <laughs> Text one. New Sedaris book, page 27. <laughs> Text two. Quote. Yeah, well, to help both of you, said the duck, and he waddled off. <laughs> <laughs> Text three. Waddled! <laughs> all caps, three exclamation points. <laughs> I had to buy my impulse to squeal and jump around. Instead, I closed the book, stood up, walked directly to the front counter and bought it. <laughs> Driving home, my mind drifted back to the euphoria of that October night. I didn't die happy. I just added a day with Sedaris. <laughs> then a new question crept into my head. When I hit the door, I went straight to my MacBook and started checking all the standard online sources for the answer to my newest dilemma. After half a dozen websites, I reached for my well-loved Oxford Dictionary and Thesaurus, and then two writer's handbooks I keep beside me. Gaining confidence with each source, I became comfortable with the answer. Edit is a transitive verb, meaning to prepare material, written, audio, or video, for publication by correcting, condensing, or otherwise modifying it. Edit is what I had done. I have been his editor. As I closed my laptop and returned the books to, to their shelf, my WJSAT folder caught my eye. This is where I keep the letters from places that have rejected writing submissions. It stands for, we'll just see about that. <laughs> then I went back to my chair. 